that speaking of peanuts, uh, yeah. the 92, is that the one you posted recently online, the, the concert that you were referring to? Yeah, that, that was a, that, that, that's a part of the, the end of that concert. Oh, okay. That, that was the most recent upload. So, um, yeah, that was in, I think, again, in the lovely month of October, <laughs> about, about 45 minutes from where I'm sitting right now. I had a rehearsal with a with a band I was playing with at the time. I was 15 and my father drove me to the rehearsal. And after the rehearsal was over, somebody said, Oh, Peanut Sacco is playing at the at the um local um concert hall, mm -hmm. whatever they call it tonight. And um and somebody else said, Did Peanuts play did Peanuts play with the Hot Five or the Hot Seven? And I just shot out, you know, just one second later, I said, with the All-Stars. Yeah, <laughs> that Peanuts one. <laughs> Peanuts was seven when the Hot Five recorded. No, no, no. Anyway, so yeah, it was a yeah. Peanuts, Peanuts Hacko and the the young generation of swing. Ah, that's it. It was an international big band with Dan Barrett, John Allred on trombones, Randy Stanky, John Eric Kelso, and on trumpets and Ralf Hesse from Germany on trumpet also. Uh, Mike gets Harry on that too, uh, Alan. Yeah. Yeah. Harry Allen, um, Chuck Wilson, Rainer Heute and Christian Plattner on reeds. Mm -hmm. Mike Götz at the piano from Switzerland. Howard Alden at the guitar and Alec Dankworth on bass and and Gregor Beck on drums. Ah, Peanuts yeah. and Louise Tobin and um, yeah. And we got, I don't know how, we were seats in the front row. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it was just. Um, yeah, it was what you posted. It was fantastic set. Of course, with those absolutely. guys, you can go wrong, but. Oh, yeah. Absolutely Pe fantastic. Yeah. Peanuts had done, a, there's a, one of my favorite albums was the Glenn Miller Army Air Force uh, recordings. There was mm -hmm. a set. And Peanuts was, uh, I think, I don't. I remember if it was holiday for strings or something that peanuts took us anyway he did a beautiful solo on it and i just thought you know what yeah. it's so sad that people didn't recognize him as well as uh, buddy defranco or benny goodman or anybody else because he just he could really lay it out there and he just was happy to not be in the spotlight he was just fine yeah. but i just wish that more people had given him the credit that I felt that he should have been owed, but he was just such a sweet, unassuming man, at least mm. every time that I had met him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he had, if, if he made anybody mad, I don't know about it. I don't care. <laughs> I, 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 you know, except a few, uh, um, you know, uh, Mr. Hacker, would you please sign this LP for me? I didn't have any interaction with Peanuts. I saw mm -hmm. him a few times in concert and, um, well, uh, I'm not sure, but um, at least, you know, in my estimation or to my knowledge, um, Peanuts had a was a very busy throughout his playing career and um, the world over, and uh, and he had a very solid fan base, you know, everywhere. Yeah. Well, I, I I know of people here in Germany and the southern part of Germany around Stuttgart who uh, knew him very well, and. Um, he came back to play here every, every year, every two years. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think he also led the, no, he, he did lead the Glenn Miller band in the 70s at one point. Yeah. I was, years. I was trying to remember. I thought he had done that, but I wasn't positive it was Glenn Miller band or one of the other ghost bands going around at the time. Yeah. Was, I know Tex Beneke had led it for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I don't remember all the particulars of that, but, and then Tex got his own big band and, Yes. Um, I, I know that Ray McKinley uh, led the band for a number of years, mm -hmm. uh, starting in the late 50s through yeah. 1966. Yeah. And, it, and Ray and Peanuts, they were, of course, together in the, um, in the right. Van Miller's yeah. Army Band. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it, um, the, one of the things that Hal and I had been talking about was how many people came out of that it became big band leaders or mm -hmm. stellar players had come out of the Ben Pollock band, yeah. which subsequently turned into the Bobcats, obviously after Ben's death, but yeah. uh, 
it, it was almost like a little college for big band leaders because Glenn Miller, the do both Dorseys, Benny Goodman, um, uh, obviously Harry not James. Basie or Allington, but you know, it's just like everybody that yeah. came out of there ended up, and Harry, Harry was in the public was band too. too. Yeah. But uh, it was obviously, I mean, I guess some of it was the timing of it, but all of them just went on to excellent careers and had come out of yes. the Pollock band. And Pollock was, I mean, I know he got kicked out of the band at one point, but I think that was more personal issues. I think as a band leader, he was very mm -hmm. encouraging and supportive to the point where all mm -hmm. of them left him and went on and did their own thing and did great at it. Yeah. Do you remember the, um, you and I had been talking about the Real Ambassadors album and you posted again some picture I had never seen before with Lottie Lenya on that. Um, do you remember the first time that you heard they say I look like God and how that made you feel? I, uh, I'm, not I'm not exaggerating and you, uh, and you kind of see it and uh, I'm not going to show it either, but you just, you just mentioned that, that song yeah. That recording by Armstrong, they say I look like God. It just makes my hair stand up. Yeah. And um, yeah, the real ambassadors, as Louis Armstrong said, um, Dave Bubik and I Iola Bubik have written me an opera. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. Yeah. And um, it was too hip for the times, as far as I understand. Oh, yeah. It was too advanced. But um, it's just so, and it's still um, current. Is that the word? Yeah. Yeah, That's today. Nice. Today. Yeah. All those issues outlined in that album you know and it was all you know sent, you know around you know telling the people who's the real ambassador right um louis armstrong yeah and that track um, they say i look like god um and not only it makes the listener a uh, listener um break down and get teary eyed but you can hear him mm -hmm. towards the end of the song that he, yeah. he broke down as well. Yeah, he's getting very, very, down. very, very deep stuff. Yeah. Well, and I think I told you I talked to Dave mm -hmm. and Iola about that because that had that had hit me very much the same way. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember if it was Dave or Iola, but they were both sitting there saying that they were all sitting in there, and everybody in the room, from the engineers to all the guys in the band to all the guests, were just in tears just mm. listening mm. to that particular mm. song. And I, I think that I remember Dave saying, you wouldn't think of, although yes, the commercial, the Hello Dolly, the It's a Wonderful World. And yes, he was an excellent vocalist, but most of what musicians remember him for is mostly his just general musicality, including his horn, but don't really necessarily set him apart as a vocalist. But on that tune, mm. he didn't touch the horn. No. And uh, Dave said that Lewis delivered a hundred times more than he expected was going to happen. He goes, I almost stopped playing. And for Dave to say that, that's something. <laughs> but, yes, and the yes. tongue in cheek, good reviews of uh, Carmen McRae. I think I just laugh every time I listen to that, that yeah. her delivery of that particular yeah. one was just yeah. Yeah. solid. You couldn't get somebody else that could do yeah. it the same way as her on that. Yeah, but um, it was the um, uh, very recently, only a few weeks or a few days ago, was the uh, the anniversary of um, mm, yeah, the recording, um, you know, the recording of that album, and um, yeah. uh, uh, the um, our Armstrong champion out there. Little shout out to Ricky Riccardi, who yeah. I haven't yeah. met in person yet. Me either. Um, <laughs> he, oh man, he's just he's just out of sight. Wealth of he's, knowledge. He's do, what he's doing for yes, for Louis Armstrong and all of us. So he he um he posted a lot of material and pictures taken by the uh, sadly recently deceased um, Jack Bradley, who was a uh, mm -hmm. great Armstrong friend of Armstrong's and uh, Armstrong's personal photo taker. Oh. And um, and, uh, and Ricky also shared um, a recording of a, of a rehearsal. Dave Bubeck and the All Stars and um, Eugene Wright on bass mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. Joe Morello mm -hmm. drums uh, rehearsing um, not cultural exchange um, 
Yeah. Remember who you are. Ah, uh, yeah. With uh, uh, Armstrong and Trami Young doing the vocals. Mm -hmm. And it's very, uh, very insightful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have yeah. to look at that. I liked Trami's vocals. I mean, I just, oh, yeah. of, course, of course, you can't think of Trami. I, mean, I can't think of Trami without thinking of Margie that with the Lunsford thing, but um, yes, yes. I always liked Trami's vocals. I just thought it was kind of hip. Oh, same here. Same here. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he, what was the other one? Oh, in uh, High Society, with, did, did the, uh, uh, the, now you has jazz with, with Bing and everything, but yeah. not in the movie, but when they would do it on the road, obviously Bing wasn't with them. So Trummy would take the Bing part and oh, heard yeah. some of those recordings. They just have so much fun. They certainly did. What a, yeah, Trummy Young did, did so much for that band and he truly loved Louis Armstrong. And, uh, mm -hmm. and he, um, you know, again, we spoke earlier about um, people criticizing that band for playing the same chorus as Night of mm -hmm. Night, which it didn't do. That is a huge mishearing. And um, and the same thing goes for um, uh, so people criticized them for playing the same chorus as Night of the Night, which wasn't true. And they also said, um, Oh, Trummy simplified his style. No, mm -mm. Trummy simply was a musician with huge ears mm -hmm. and a big heart, and he listened to what was going on around him. Mm -hmm. And he was the Trummy, uh, Louis Armstrong's left and right arm. Mm -hmm. No, you they know, were. Simon, Siamese if you twins. don't believe it, listen to uh, the W.C. Handy album, the St. Louis Blues, yeah. those last couple choruses with him and Louie. It's like the clarinet player is off. He, it's like he just finally stops and goes, this is the conversation between you two. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't believe that, uh, like you say, uh, then just listen to St. Louis Blues and just those last couple choruses and that shows you right there what, how much they just played off of each other and loved each other so much. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the greatest albums of all time. Mm -hmm. And um, and also in another testament to their, um, to how they worked and, you know, and played together and, um, you know, and to that um, unique connection and the, one of the greatest mm -hmm. brass, brass teams, music teams. Mm -hmm. of all time is the last recording session that Trummy was on that was a session in the December 63 when they recorded Hello Dolly and the other tune they recorded on that session was I've got a lot of a lot of living to do oh I haven't heard that one in a long time yeah, yeah. and the last chorus the ensemble chorus after the vocal listen to Trummy and yeah and Lewis play off each other it's just yeah yeah
speaking of Butch Miles, big, big, big hero of mine and uh, and a friend. Same goes to his lovely wife, Linda. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky enough to visit them a few years ago at their home in Austin, Texas. So uh -huh. the, on, the, on the same stage that I saw Peanuts play in 1992, a year later, again, we're in the wild, wild month of October. Where things <laughs> happen. happen if I ever go to Germany, I now know I'm going Germany. in October. Yeah. That's when, Pete went, that's when the great bands tour Germany. Um, <laughs> by the same promoter, there was a package called the Salute to Eddie Kahn. And, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't Which know. Which is anybody. also on your YouTube channel, I think, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. At, with uh, at, at Polzer, Bob mm -hmm. Havens, Alan Vache, Johnny Barnes, Johnny Barrow. Um, on the tour, they had three guitar players uh, covering different parts of the tour. George Van Epps was supposed to do the whole tour. He couldn't do the whole tour. Oh. Um, and so Jim Douglas and Howard Alden um, covered parts of it. And I think towards the end, towards the end of the tour, Howard and George Van Epps played. Oh. Together. Um, Bob Haggard, uh, Polly Polvo was singing, mm -hmm. and Butch Miles on drums. So uh, the local big band played the first few numbers. Right. And then it was kind of a, a rebuilding phase going on on stage. You know, the drum sets were changed. Yeah. And then I, I, I did not know who, except for Bob Havens, who I'd seen on a video. I had no idea who these people were. I only knew. Yeah, knew that they were super duper, you know, the best of the best. So um, the drummer sat down behind the set of drums and he started playing a kind of a medium beat, and then the musicians were introduced one by one as, and um, and he was just smiling and swinging and playing mm -hmm. magnificently the whole night. Yeah, and, and every time uh, I have had the chance and had the chance to see Butch play, that's what the uh, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just um, very, very special. Yeah. Just so much like Louie. Just you, this yeah. is what I want to do, and I'm happy doing it, and I'm yeah. always happy doing it, <laughs> even yeah. if you don't feel well or you're having a tough issue off the stand. When you're on it, it's you're in it. But yeah, he's he's definitely one of the best. There's so many musicians I've talked to that are full time musicians. Hmm who have said that, that sort of the common denominator has been very supportive parents. And you've mentioned them several times in this interview. Yeah. You're just like mine, your parents drove you here, took you here, helped you with this, helped you with that. How important have your parents been to being able, for you to be able to do what you do now? In, unmeasurable, invaluable. Um, Drove me to concerts of the this band, the Dixieland band, with with some of the members that I still make music today. Like mm -hmm. once or twice a year, we get together. Drove me to those concerts and um, very supportive. Never said never said no. Mm -hmm. Never said you have to get a proper job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they were worried. I'm sure, yeah. Well, their parents. I think they were, yeah, I think they were. Uh, they did their best to, to hide their worries, you know, but um, <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, not, not possible. No, it wouldn't have happened without. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even more so because of the instrument you chose to play, because uh, mine had <laughs> enough trouble with me on clarinet. I can only imagine. Who? <laughs> <laughs> you know. if i had said drums it would have been bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh dear yeah. those drum heads are broken are they oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so now nice that they were so supportive with that because that's also a lot of transportation and throwing your back out trying to schlep yeah. everything around yeah yeah no it's it's, it's good workout yeah yeah <laughs> how do you think you really kind of learned how to listen was it just something that it, it once it kind of hit you from those two cassettes that you started really actively listening more or did you have mentors that helped you kind of pinpoint different things for whatever reason I think that already happened that that happened by itself Mm -hmm. You know, 
I think yeah. by when I was 10 or 12 years old, I was slowly starting to be able to uh, hear the difference, you know, the sound of a certain trombone player, let's say right. the old Armstrong All-Stars. Oh, okay. Then when I kind of had a faint, a faint idea how Trummy sounded, mm -hmm. then I thought, oh, this cannot be him. This must be some, somebody else. Right. Yeah. So it was... It happened, started to happen very early on. Well, thanks for doing this, Bernard. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.